Hello everybody, my name is Lina and I'm here with Apex STEM Tutorials. Today we're going to be showing you how to wrap up all those lessons that we have been learning on the if, the forever, the cloning, and how to use them to build a Minecraft game. We're going to be building a Minecraft game where you actually get to choose skeletons. So stick around, don't forget to like and subscribe to your channel for more. Let's go check that out. Alright, let's check out that demo. So this is our game. We have Alex and the Minecraft world and skeletons who are trying to get to her. Let's see, how do we defeat these? So as you can see, we shoot arrows from our bow and our bow changes direction depending where our mouse is pointing. And we do not want those skeletons to get to us or they would deplete our life. Oh no, this one touched me. So if it touches you, your hearts go down. Let's go ahead and check out that code. So as you can see here, we're using the flag and we're having, we have a variable here that is called life. I'm setting the variable to 100 because every time the skeleton touches Alex, I want it to go ahead and decrease by negative one and also play this chump noise. Basically what this code is doing is setting, when our game starts, setting our life to 100 and forever checking if the skeleton touches Alex then we're going to deplete her life by negative one and we're going to play the chump sound and that's all we do with Alex now let's check out the code for the skeleton we have a flag so the flag tells us when I click on this flag up here I want you to do the following so it's gonna show the skeleton and then it's going to show it at this specific location. It's going to set it to go to the specific location. It's going to start right there. And then forever, this is our forever loop, is going to change X by 5 and change costume. So this change X by 5 is going to allow to, for my skeleton here to move forward. And the costume makes it look like it's walking. So if you can see here, it makes it look like it's walking like that. And then inside of the forever loop, we're going to have two if loops, but inside of one of the if loops, we're going to have another if loop, what they call a nested if loop right here. So I have it if the skeleton touches the edge of the screen on the far right, or the skeleton is touched by the arrow that Alex is throwing, then we're going to do another check inside. If the skeleton is being touched by that arrow, then I wanted to play this rattle sound. And the reason I had to put another if here is because I don't want to play that sound if it touches the edge of the screen on the far right. I only wanted to play it if it's touching, touched by the arrow. So if the skeleton is touched by the arrow, it's gonna play that rattle sound. I wanted to start at a random position, so that's why I put this random position. And then we're gonna set the X to negative five, too. So I wanted to go ahead and, and come out from over here again. I don't want it to just randomly pop on the screen. So that's why I put that. Now when we exit that if, now we're going to go ahead and check for the life over here. If life is less than zero, if Alex's life is less than zero, if she's completely gone, we want our skeleton to hide. Because we're going to a game over screen. Now let's go to the bow. The bow we've looked at in another video. I gave you the code for this. The only new thing about it is this if here. But let's go over the code itself. Right here you have a green flag. When the green flag is is clicked, I want the, the actual bow to show. And I wanted it in the front layer. For some reason it was put in the back layer so I needed to bring it forward. And then forever I want my arrow to be pointing in the 90 degree and point towards my mouse. So it's gonna allow for that bow to follow my mouse, as you can see right here. It follows my mouse. And then we're going to have an if. Another thing that we wanna do is when Alex lab is zero again, we want that bow to disappear from the screen because we wanna go to our game over screen. Now, let's go ahead and look at the arrow code. For the arrow, it, there's a little bit more going on, but again, we explained a lot of this in a previous video, but just let me go over it really quickly for you. 
So when the flag is clicked, I want my arrow to go to the front layer. I want it to hide. When we press this space, we want it to create a clone of itself. And when it's actually creating a clone of itself, we want the clone to show. We want the clone to towards the bow. We want the clone to follow towards the mouse. So point towards the mouse. And that's how we make the arrows go in the direction of where the mouse is. And then we want the arrow to go all the way to the edge of the screen. When it touches the edge of the screen, that's when we do the delete the clone. Once it's over, it deletes. So it keeps moving at five steps until it touches the edge of the screen and then it gets deleted. Another thing that I do with the clone is forever check what our life is. If the life of Alex, again, it's zero, we want to hide our arrow. We want to hide every sprite that we do not need for the game over screen. And then let's go ahead and look at these hearts on the bottom. These hearts on the bottom are basically, let's start with the customs. Uh, as you can see, I started with the full hearts. So she's at 100% there, she's at 90. And I just kept going down until I had all the different sprites for the hearts. And this is where she's completely depleted. Go and look at what we did there. This is basically just checking where the life is. This is all this piece of code does. So we're going to go and set this flag. When the flag is clicked, I want those hearts to be at a hundred percent. So we're going to show the hearts a hundred, which means they're all going to be filled. So as you can see, they're all filled. And then forever, we want to check depending on the number the life is. If the life is equal to 90 or the life is equal to 80, then we want it to go and continue showing the sprite depending on where her level of life is. And this is basically, as you can see, just if loops that check where we're at. And here is our variable, so you can actually see our variable up here and see the number where it's at. So if I click on it, you're going to see it deplete by a lot when the first skeleton touches Alex and then the second. And that's how it actually works here, just by checking this number is going to go ahead and set the number of hearts here that it got depleted. Now let's check out the last piece of code that I have here, which is our backdrops. The backdrop doesn't do much other than check where we're at. And the backdrop also depends on this life variable. So when the flag is clicked, we want to set the background to the regular background, which is this background here. And the way we set those is to go to the backdrops and have two different ones. So I have this one, which is normal, and then I have the game over one, which is the other one that we play when our game is over. Let's go ahead and continue back into the code. So right here, I'm playing the regular background, and then forever, I am checking if Alex's life is less than zero. When it does become less than zero, then I'm going to switch the backdrop to that game over screen. And this basically wraps up our tutorial on how to create a shooting game based on everything you guys have already learned from other previous videos. So we're using a lot of the elements, like the ifs, the for, here. We're using the clones over here that we learned in other videos. It's, this is a kind of a project to show you what you can actually do once you learn all those blocks and feel comfortable using them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. I didn't want to bore you with the pulling and clicking and stuff. I just wanted to show you how to actually build everything so that you go ahead and build your own thing. If you do, I would love to see it. And like I said, this is more like a shooting game, so you don't have to be shooting arrows. You can be shooting fruit. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And it, this game allowed you to see all the elements that we have already been learning and how to actually use them. If you like that, don't forget to like and subscribe to your channel, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.